Howdy and welcome back to the shop. Today we're having a nice rainy day, so if the rain on the roof bothers you, I'm so sorry. Maybe you can make it to the end of the video without going to sleep. So what I've got here, I've got my tool post mounted router grinder, tool post grinder set up. I'll put a card up here. I think I did a video on this here a while back when I built this device. Uh, this is just a cheap hazard fraught uh, quarter inch trim router. This of course is my Grizzly lathe. So what I'm building today is a counter bore. Uh, I need to counter bore some 3 8 holes to accept a quarter inch washer. So don't have to do but two of them and I'm only doing them in aluminum. So this does not have to be the most precise or long lived counter bore that I own and I do own a few I just don't have any the right size so let's back up here a minute so that twist drill that's in my lathe right now started off life as one of these cheap flea bay special $20 for a set of really crappy drill bits uh, these twist drills are like a one-time use thing. Uh, they're tempered about as hard as mashed taters. So, I mean, they're just not a whole lot to them. I mean, they're, they're pretty sad. You know, when you can file a twist drill, it is not going to be a happy day if you're trying to cut anything really hard with them. They probably need re-tempered. I'm not gonna fool with them. Uh, I bought them for one project, put them in a drawer, and I've been making counter bores as needed from these. So back to the lathe. So on this, this is a just a stone for a quarter inch die grinder. Now when you buy these, make good and doggone sure that you see how much, how many RPM that stone is rated for, because they are not all rated to survive the rpm of your router this router is 26,000 rpm no load uh, so a 30,000 rpm stone is good enough i wouldn't go with just a really cheap stone because it will explode on you so the procedure here is to turn the lathe on at a slow rpm maybe 80 100 rpm and then gently face the end of your drill bit off. Now I did grind it square over at the bench grinder, uh, reasonably square, but then I faced it off with this. I want my pilot to be 3 8 so I backed my tool out a little bit more than 3 8 maybe, oh, 400 thousand, something like that, and then proceeded to walk in, ning, 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 and cut cut back these flutes right here. So I cut the flute back and once I had me a little bit of a pilot established I put my caterpillars on there and measured it and then adjusted my feed in that axis to get the right pilot diameter and then I just kept going until I got enough pilot that I can do something with it. So now it's time to go to the bench grinder. But before we go to the bench grinder, you will notice that I have covered the ways with some old greasy rags. You don't want grinder dust down in your, in your ways and in your lathe. So take some precautions, but make sure that the frazzled edges of your greasy rags don't get caught up in nothing, or you will invent a new style of buffing. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make a back cut here to relieve that cutting edge. Uh, we're not going to sharpen the cutting edge and give it any rake yet. Whoop, I'm out of camera. We need to relieve this here so we've got some back relief. And then once we get that done, then we'll put just a little bit of uh, rake on that cutting edge so that it'll bite very, very gently. We don't want this thing taking big old bites. We just want we just want to go just a little bit. 
So I'll do this and then I'm going to put a pretty good relief on this and probably while I'm in there I'm going to knock this edge right here over so that this doesn't bite into my through hole as I'm counter boring. So, okay, so you can see I've got my back reliefs cut. Now this side has not, yep, this side has not been sharpened. That's just from the, from the lathe and my tool post grinder. And this side has. So you can see, maybe, There's just a little bit of cutting angle on that and then plenty of relief. And I'm going to do the other side the same way. Now, as I'm sharpening this cutting edge, I'm watching it and I'm going right up to the very tippity tip tip with my flutes oriented to where this is horizontal against the wheel. So you don't want to get her like that. You don't want to get her like that. You want to get her horizontal. Same as if you was sharpening a drill bit for real. So, back to the grinder we go. Alright, I got my depth stop set on my drill. I've got my uh, back gears are engaged, so we've got her slowed down pretty good. Let's see if it'll cut. I ain't got something tight. Yeah. Helps if you tighten the table down. Looky there. You said that'd never work. Well, shame on you. Now, I'm not going to town on the feed pressure here. I'm just kind of letting it find its own, find its own feed rate. Should be about right. Well, there we go. Nicely counterboard. Got a nice little radius down there in the bottom of the hole. Broke that sh sharp edge. So all I got to do is break this sharp edge and bang zip pow. We've got us a fine tool that works nicely. So, I hope you guys learned something, got something out of this. In the meanwhile, till we drive or meet again, y'all drive safe, watch for deer.